Right, so welcome everybody. This is the new and improved Maple Farm. He's done a lot of things. Now, that shadow's very, very weird. But it's a weird mod. But, yeah, he, Cavalier Roy's been extremely busy. He's finally got the go-ahead from Giants to have this updated field. Now, as we can see below us, we've got a lot of vehicles. We'll go across them in turn because we are in uh, new farm mode. I've modded some extra money so I can buy the helicopters and I can buy a vehicle too. But yeah, what's he added to this? So he's fixed the karma positions. So that means uh, the things that contain certain things like seeds and they contain fertilizer. They may even contain animal feed, who knows? But they fixed them positions anyway. He's fixed them in your clamps clipping into the robot feeder. He's fixed the silage clamps too. He's made minor terrain fixes. I'm not too sure what he means by that. I mean, as we get into the series, I think it'll become more apparent. He's fixed the floating trees to improve visibility in both first and first person views. So uh, he's added a new growth calendar, which is what we will see in here. So where's our growth calendar gone? So we no longer have the standard Farming Simulator 22 calendar. We have an Irish growth calendar, which is quite interesting. So we've got wheat that's plantable in two different seasons. We've got it's harvested in one particular season. And it's the same across with everything else, so there's had minor, uh, major changes, you can only harvest grass from April onwards, whereas normally it's from March all the way up until November. But in fact, no, it's year-round, isn't it, to harvest, it's just you can't plant, on, uh, you can't grow any on after October, but now it runs all the way up to just before December. He's also... So he's added the floodlights to all the houses. If you cut, it will remove the house and the items around it. So if we go to our safe house, if it cut it. So I'm assuming that we can't actually sell our safe house. Let's have a look. So if we go to... Oh, wait a minute. It might just be for houses that you can't put onto the fields. He's also made it so that all playable areas are purchasable. Now I have found one issue with this. Uh, because it's not particularly true. I can't buy this area. I can buy that area, the, min the actual heap itself. I can buy this little tree area here, but I can't actually buy the BGA area, which is a bit of a pain in the backside. I mean, it's not a game changer. You can't buy the road network, which again, isn't a big issue. But those are the only two areas you can't buy. He's added a new placeables area too, which is this up here. So this is a machine which is just gonna be really, really flat land, which you will, Purchase things on it. So you'll add your factories that you want, so it modifies things. So if you wanted the composter, add it up there. If you wanted the multi grain, uh, the multi buying thing, the government drain, add it up there so you can sell your compost. That's quick, easy money as well. If you wanted to add a BGA, that's not as big as this one because that one's one megawatt, which is fantastic. At only 1.5 million, too. So it's not too bad, but I wish you could buy the land with the BGA because then you could add a slurry tank to it. You could add all sorts to it. So what else has he added? Uh, large animal pens with increased capacities for animals, milk, slurry and food added to the build menu. So that's interesting. 11 sheds added in the in-game build menu. So that's quite fun. I'm hoping they're a lot cheaper. Maybe, I mean, it does tend to make them cheaper than what they are. So let's have a look. It's looking at things like ridiculously cheap. So yeah, the, maybe these. They're really cheap and that's to show sure they're in-game. They're nice. But yeah, 10 grand for that. That's huge. And I don't think you can get that in game. 10 grand for that one too, which isn't massive, but it's sizable. Yeah, he's added all kinds of cheap equipment to it, so that's nice. What else? Is it done? Stonewall and Hedge has been added to the game build menu, so that's another good thing. So if we go back to the build menu again. Go to, uh, I think it's under decoration fencing. So his original wall was a brick wall and he had the hedges as well. I'm assuming that they're going to be, ah, but with that one, yeah, maple farm mod. And this one, I like these fences. And then they've got the stone wall as well, which is nice. That's very uh, United Kingdom ish, or British. 
So most mail files are data the use of the functions introduced in the 1.5 patch, such as storage bins, having the ability to jump to them. That's an interesting feature. And the ability to cut a light at the garage to remove all decor trees, oak, birch, etc. Leaving only forestry trees to cut down. That's handy. I hate it when you can't do that with maps. This uh, map that I used to play on, I think it might have been Storm Valley. And those trees you just couldn't cut down. It was a pain in the backside. It just took up too much room. You couldn't build anything on the land that you owned. Added the ability to cut the light at the garage to remove all field based hedges. If you wish to have a cut each section away, hedges and pas around pastures will not be removed but will be cut away if the land is owned. If you own the land, it's going to cut it away. If you don't own the land, it's not going to cut it. But that's a really handy feature. It means that we don't have to worry about colliding with the poles, I guess. Some trees will place with more common Irish trees, as for all, it is an Irish map. Such as elm and all spruce trees have been replaced with pine trees. And that's nice. They're very, very low maintenance trees as well. Very easy to cut. Placeables area added for you to purchase and use as you see fit, which is as we discussed earlier. That's this big area up here. So that's going to be nice. And you can see it on the map actually, it's a nice big concrete block. It's really, really flat as well, which I'm quite impressed with. It's a generally flat map actually. There's a couple of hills here and there, but overall it's nice and flat. It's not too hilly like you see in some of the English countrysides. I mean, Ireland can't be too indifferent. Placeables are added for you to purchase and use as you see fit. Yeah, that's uh, just said that one. Uh, post inside hedges made collidable. This will stop post dropping through the map after being cut away. Now the post dropping didn't actually bother me too much. It, I preferred the post dropping so I could drive through them but that was just me being lazy but I mean the heads didn't when pallets couldn't go through them which I think we're going to have the same issue with anywhere. But let's come over to our outer. So now we've had the air tour we'll probably see the helicopter slowly fall down. But yeah, let's uh, move on. Let's have a look at what's going on in the ground. So we're in our lovely Audi A7. So yeah, as you can see, if I wanted to drive through this side on, I'm more likely going to hit a post. I need to turn that indicator off. So as we get closer to our farm, let's just try and cut in through here. I missed the post there because it's right there, but I'll purposefully hit a post now just to see what it's like. I think I'm going to hit the post directly. There we go. So yeah, you do hit the post and you fall back. So as we're starting as a new farm, I'm sure a lot of people would like to do that. I prefer this map as starting from scratch. Uh, not starting from scratch, that would be an interesting challenge though. But I do like doing this map as uh, starting as a farm manager. Because it just gives me a little more freedom with what I want to do. But I'm not liking this, I can't see the pole, there we are. So crop destruction isn't turned off, but grass doesn't get destroyed anyway, so I'm quite happy though. But yeah, we enter our farm now. And what do we encounter? So we've got some animal feed, animal areas that we've actually just trespassed into. I mean, I'm assuming this is going to be for possibly pigs, maybe sheep. Doesn't look like an area for horses. Horses prefer meadows such as these. But yeah, it'd help if we actually got onto the road that went into the farm. I'll go into first person but I've not activated my head tracking thing. So it might take a while to get in here. No, we're looking good. Let's put our foot down because I can see an entrance here. I know an Audi is not built for this terrain, but we can get over that, it is farm simulator. Right, so we're entering our farm now. So this is what you would do if you started as a brand new farm. So as you can see, we've got a massive silage bunker here. We've got something that looks like it's probably 
go into contain. Uh, I'd say liquid fertilizer or solid fertilizer. Stainless steel fertilizer tank. What do you contain? Solid fertilizer. So 60,000 liters of it all as well. So that's really, really good. As you can see, we've got our... Oh, it landed right on top of our cow shed. That's good. So as we can see, the cow shed with a manure bunker attached to it. Well, a manure heap extension. This one's looking like it'll be probably liquid. Yeah, liquid fertilizer tank. 173,000 litres. So this is our cow shed with the robotic feeder. Has a capacity of, I think it said 700, was it? Oh, 850, so that's quite large. That'll produce a lot of manure. Sell it over to the BGA. You get a shitload of cash for that. This one. I'm looking, and it's just a big garage. But you could use that as probably a grain bunker as well. We've got another cow feeder here. And that's a 700 cows, so that's still quite big. Um, another manure heap. We have our silo, which contains 800,000 litre capacity. That's not too bad at all. Looks like a cement mixer. Is that a cement mixer? I'm not too sure. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, it could be. I don't know. This is obviously the diesel tank. It contains up to 10,000 litres. That's still not bad. That looks like an ideal area to store grain. But we do have a silo. Now, what we're left with. So, the equipment-wise, you've got this nice little massive Ferguson with the front loader attacher. We've got this uh, class wheel loader, which is a really, very really nice and expensive vehicle too. The Torian. Torian. I don't know how you pronounce that. And this Massey Ferguson, which is the Massey Ferguson MFSS. Don't have a clue what that means. So that comes with, it looks like a manure spike, a silage fork even. This one's a bale fork. Yeah, bale spike. Got a forager. What else have we got? So let's have a look. So we've seen that one. We've seen this one. We've got a lizard pickup. Now we've got an old school tractor. We've got a Scorpio stone picker. Oh, we've got a nice little fence here as well. Is it a fence? No, it's not. It's a Valtra Velmet. Ah, here's the fence where we are. That confused me for a second. I was thinking to myself then, that's not the right colour. So I'm assuming that one's going to be doing the storm picking. That one's probably going to do some ploughing or something. I don't know. And then we've got the Valtra over here. And that is with a grass roller. A planter. That's what it looks like. Oh, is that a fertiliser? Oh, that's no, a cedar. Oh, maybe a planter. I don't know. So the only thing it's missing is a baler and a wrapper. We've got the plow, we've got the fertilizer, we've got the lime spreader. Oh, sorry, fertilizer spreader. But yeah, we've got enough equipment to get ourselves going with the grass curve. Oh, we've got the mower over here, we've got the windrow. Looks like we've got a, got a bale loader, so where's our baler? That should be somewhere then. Oh, it's over here. So we've got a bale of the lower loader. But yeah, that's quite handy. Let's have a look at what we do actually own, though. So besides the helicopter, we've got a small tractor. So we've got the fence, we've got the massive, we've got the... Bleh. We've got the Valtra Velmet. And then we've got the wheel loader, the class. We've got a pickup and an Audi S7, but that's me added that. Scorpio, at what capacity is that? 2,000 litres, so it's not been modded whatsoever. That's not a plough, it's a subsiler. We've got a cedar, but that just looks like an extension. So I don't know why we've got the extension, but we've got the actual cedar itself. Got a fertilizer spreaders. Got grass curse, so that's the roller. And it's a weeder as well. So we've got our little mower. We've got our tedder. Got our windrower, forager. Got a baler, bale loader. I don't see why we'd need the forager if we've got the bale loader. A low loader, some weights. Uh, we've got the silage fork. And we've got the bale spike. Now we need a manure fork as well. That would be something that would be interesting to get. But yeah, I don't understand why we've got the extension for a cedar, but not the actual cedar itself. Maybe it's just giving us the extra thing to save up for. Because, I mean, grass care, you don't need a great deal. But yeah, in terms of map layout, it's pretty much identical to what it was. Some of the fields look like they've been sort of leveled off in terms of running parallel with each other. With more 90 degree angles or straight lines. 
But other than that, absolutely perfect Cavalier Rye. But, you know, you can't buy this area, so that's not fun. I mean, you can buy the actual th uh, factory, but you can't buy the land. You can't buy the roads either. You can buy everything else. So, I mean, apart from that, everything's okay. It's a shame it's the last time he's going to touch this because it's a beautiful map and I would like to be able to purchase that bit of land. Just so I could add a slurry pit. That's the only thing. Unless you want to add it yourself, you know, the possibilities there. Well, let's visit this. So does it actually have a slurry pit? So it's got the shed, it's got a large bunker, but no slurry pit. There's actually nowhere to put digestate. It looks like it's just all silage, unless it's down here. Ah, right, it's over here. This is where we put our digestate, and now we're in your and all the other bits. But now where do we collect all the digestate? Well, if we don't put digestates in here, we put slurry in here. And this is looking like the area where we collect our digestates. Which I wish that was a bit closer to this pump. Wish they had a realism. Um, the deers are spawning in randomly. But let's... Uh, let's cut a spotlight. Ah, we can't do that. So where's our farmhouse? So over here, let's visit. They said there's a spotlight by the house. And it will remove all things unholy. Drain pipe, not a spotlight. That might mean another house, I'm not too sure. What did he say? I would just read through lights like, so at the garage to remove all the field bears hedges, right? So I'm assuming garage means shop. So it could mean this big heifer. But I think it might mean this little thing. I think I may have done that prematurely because I'm sure it says if you own the land. Oh no, it's got rid of all the uh, decorative trees, hasn't it? But everything around me looks like it's forestry built. But yep, that's the last of it. That's a beautiful job again, Cavalier. Fantastic. I never doubted you in the first place. But you've delivered an excellent map. And I think it's absolutely beautiful. So I am going to fly back to the UK. Well, not the UK, we are in the UK, but I'm going to fly back to England. I'm going to get back onto my PC and watch my thing disappear all the time. Maybe too high up. And I'll see you for the actual series. So thank you, like, subscribe, and don't forget to. And I'll see you again soon.